So without any introduction, please, Stefan. Yes. Is your action. You see everything? Yeah. yeah. So perfect. Uh, so welcome everybody to the last uh, lecture. And um, just important before I forget, uh, if you want to contact me, just go to my web page or just Google my name, then you will find easily my email address and just write me if you have any question. And today we have a very nice topic, nanoscience. I like this. I think you heard a lot about this and we will short discuss today about things, different aspects of nanoscience that are important and why it's still up to date. And again, I hope to inspire you. And today, just very, very brief, as you know, I think we want to learn smart short repetition from uh, uh, just five minutes from uh, last time. So because last time we spoke about the whole, about porous uh, materials and the importance of these materials. And um, these materials are uh, up to date and uh, you have immense uh, amount of research done. They are applied in industry. Remember just about our first lecture, heterogen catalysis, they are most of the time porous uh, materials and the importance uh, are there. And uh, one key aspect why they are so important is because, uh, because miniaturization, you want everything you want sm smaller, transport, but flexible. So you want to have more and less space. So you want, again, you know, battery, you want to have this battery so small, yeah, and more and more power in, in, in small space and only way to go is there to increase uh, sure uh, the other ways also uh, uh, to use other metals but the, the key is to increase the surface area to so that you have in, in a small volume more surface more chemical uh, reaction and uh, one way to go is just to make and we will find we will have today another way to put uh, small holes in in materials to make them porous to make them uh, um, to have more uh, surface on them. And uh, this is very important. And then again, for me, was important to give you the different boxes, uh, you know, that you think different models and you have porous materials and the, you can divide them in two boxes. One is about the, the porosity. So you have micro, meso and macro porous. And I explained you last time that this definition comes from the measurement, yeah, because uh, you say micropores materials, but you are two nanometer at the end, it's nanometer rich, but it's coming from the uh, uh, VT surface, from the gas absorption surface measurement. So you have micropores materials below uh, two nanometer pore size, then mesopores, it's between two and 50, and then you have macropores materials. So this is always, if you speak about porous materials, you need to put it in one of these three boxes. And then you have the classification after... Um, um, after the chemistry, so you have organic chem chemistry, so you have the organic chemistry uh, materials that are here, then you have the hybrid materials, and then you have classical inorganic uh, materials that are very important, uh, um, zeolite, porous carbon, uh, 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 um, uh, you, they, are this, they are important because they are applied in our daily life. But I also told you from research point of view, uh, I think um, for chemists, for engineers, there's still a lot of things to do. But for example, for zeolites, I think there's really have been done a lot. And to make their groundbreaking um, research is very difficult because it's just have been done a lot. And this is why I um, strongly advertise for you um, um, reticular chemistry. So the chemistry of taking molecular building blocks, organic and inorganic molecular building blocks, and either the organic uh, assemble them with themselves to form so called covalent organic frameworks. There are so far 500 structures and different bonding chemistry. And then you have middle organic frameworks. You connect these uh, linkers with uh, secondary building blocks, middle oxo cluster, and you form um, a porous three dimensional framework. And uh, uh, so far, over 100,000 structures are reported. So a huge amount of structure. And they can be much, much more. So um, uh, people still synthesizing more MOFs. But now, nowadays, there's more uh, the question of functionality. So you 
you should bring functionality to the material. But my point uh, for you was to inspire you because here there's a lot of things to do. And I told you, all, as I know that you, uh, Kiev University is extremely strong in organic chemistry, uh, that uh, organic chemists can be doing here a lot with the linkers and with the framework to functionalize it. And uh, uh, Alexander wrote me a mail afterwards and we looked to it. If you have functionalized linker where I can make a mock out of this, I'm very happy to do this. And then also I told you uh, uh, sh short, um, what is the, the market size, uh, 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 the current um, um, the current status of application of MOFs. And I told you, okay, there's companies, even BSF was the first company, biggest chemist company. They um, really pushed uh, uh, a lot at the beginning MOFs, but not anymore so much because they developed the technology for uh, gas tanks, for vehicles. But as you know that... Um, People don't like gas tanks, they like no e-cars. It's just safety, I understand this. Also, for example, if you have hydrogen, I mean, uh, I don't believe in hydrogen technology because hydrogen is just too difficult. I mean, if you ever work with it, it's it's the smallest molecule, it goes everywhere. And even if you close it, you you know it, you know that in, in Germany we had the Hindenburg, the, the the burning of the Hindenburg. Also, if you see how this burn and explode, uh, Nowadays, especially with terroristic attacks, I think this is no, these, these hydrogen, I think this is no way to go for us. This is a strong argument. This is the uh, too strong for this technology. So, and yes, there I think really e is to go. Then I told you also that MOF are so far the most porous material ever synthesized. And I told you about the water harvesting uh, from Oma Yagi. That was, uh, it's very innovative uh, approach. And yeah, something unique. And I told you that MOF is maybe will never have so big volume like um, uh, like zeolites because they are hydrogen catalysts applied really in tons. But you will find small applications, small uh, markets, but in total, they are quite big. And also, I want to put your attention here to this market side, especially for these professors nowadays. I don't know in your example, but when you, for example, later apply for EU grants, you know, uh, the research and reviewers, they like to have this. Do you need to write about market sites nowadays? And then to say how important it is to justify your research. So I really recommend you in any grants to write, because people like numbers, like high surface areas. So they like these kinds of numbers nowadays more and more. They're actually crazy on it. And I think it's totally overloaded. Uh, uh, but this is important. So some if you write the grants, really write about your area, about market sites, about application. This is quite convincing. But for this, uh, um, uh, it's enough for today for a repetition. I would like really to come to a, a field that I like a lot. It's about nanoscience. Um, there, there is and was a huge hype about nanoscience. I would like to reflect about this because still up to date. And again, um, I would like to... Um, to teach you to uh, discuss with you approach about thinking. So for me, again, science is really, it's starting in the head and uh, uh, how we approaching science. And when you have a field, uh, nanoscience, it's also good to, to ask yourself some question, yeah? And what are questions that are uh, uh, very simple question? What is a nanoparticle? Okay, definition, uh, I like definition, but they are not so easy. And we will have this today definition, how big is nano? That's a reasonable. How big is a nanometer? Okay, that is very easy to answer, but what is uh, nanoscience? Why nano? Why this is important? What is a nanotechnology? Uh, what opportunities are hidden in the nano uh, dimension? What techniques are there for the characterization nanoparticles? And this is very important. I cannot, uh, for material science, always this characterization challenge is uh, totally underestimated and uh, it's actually a hindering step to push certain material science. But my point here, these simple question for every project, for your PhD, for your master thesis, I always, I like to distillate really things on the basic level and ask this simple question and to, to answer them. For example, if you make a research project, ask yourself why I'm doing this. So maybe not, but for what is it important in a in in small sense, but really please be aware of this. It's very important because if you have, uh, a clear understanding of this, uh, it helps you 
uh, 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 later, uh, 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 when, when you ask by a committee or when you pu want to publish an article, so always asking these basic questions, and uh, then you can go in detail. For me, really very important. And let's start uh, 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 with the nanoparticle. And every time it's important to put in perspective. So nanoparticles could be, you can define between one and 1,000 nanometers, although in definition, and we come later to this, it's uh, between 10 and nanometers nanoparticles. And why it's like this, um, I will tell you later. And just, just for understanding, just see which length scala we are. If you're thinking tissue, if you look at tissue, this is here, one millimeter. If you cut a hair here, this is a haircut. So you're uh, um, 100 micrometers, so 10 times less. Then here uh, we have uh, cells, eukaryotic cells, then prokaryotic cells is one micrometer. And then very important, uh, uh, a virus, uh, like uh, it's a perfectly nanoparticle. Yes, we are here at 100 nanometer and proteins around 10 nanometers. So just that you have an understanding. Um, about the size that we are talking and can put this again in the white box. Always is very important. And now we, you see that every time we go uh, uh, 10 times less and why I did this. So just imagine, let's take a cube in an object and um, um, like here tissue, we have uh, this object and now we make it again like here, we're making it smaller 10 times. So imagine, we're making now uh, a 10 times uh, smaller here, this cube, this is now here, the size. And we, we're repeating this and we're repeating it. And now we take a look what happens. We to look at the volume and at the surface and you see over time when we're doing it, the ratio of surface to volume increases drastically. So by uh, uh, meaning also that you can, um, increase the surface of a material. So if you take a material like this and put it in, in 10 little cubes, you increase uh, the surface of the materials. And if you do it again and again, it's increasing and increasing. So this is why uh, nano is so uh, uh, important because at the nano level, this effect changes some properties that we will have also a moment. So one thing how to increase the surface uh, of a material, you have now learned two important things. Either you put holes inside or you just cut it smaller and smaller and smaller in pieces. Like this, you can also increase the surface of a material. And just giving to you a perspective, how nanoparticle is if you take a football or let's say uh, that your head, and if you look uh, the ratio of uh, the, the nanoparticle to your head, it's the same if you would compare your, your head to the world. This is approximately the same. So just that you know that we, how we have, can have things in perspective, which is pretty amazing. Yeah? When you just head and your world, this is how a nanoparticle is, when it looks to you, to your head, it's the same size ratio, approximately. So and now uh, why nano? Why nano is interesting? And you have some interesting electronic and optical effects. And um, if you see a nanoparticle and changing this size, so 2.5, 3.1 nanometer, 3.4 nanometer, 4, 5.2, 6. If you change the size, you, you see it, you're changing the optical properties, you will changing the band gap. You will have in a moment uh, why it's like this. But 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 uh, uh, just by changing the size and it's very small and actually the, if you think it's just a few atoms here difference if you if you take a nanoparticle at a, a small atom some uh, some couple of atoms maybe ten atoms to the nanoparticle you're changing the property so you have size depending property and this is quite interesting and, uh, and quite amazing uh, that you can sh change with so less so much yeah the, uh, the property of the material, then as the material have uh, um, more and more surface, so surface effects start to be uh, um, a key property of the material. So surface you have from every material, but at nano region, you have so much, so, so, so much atoms of the materials are at the external surface um, and you have a, a lot of surface effects. So this is uh, um, a key, importance and as you know from uh, heterogeneous catalysis and also 
last porous material. So at the surface, a lot of chemical reactions happened at the surface. So this is very important. So why nano? So you have a high aspect ratio. So um, if you see here, here's the, uh, the surface. So if you go um, in the radius, if you go smaller and smaller, smaller, you see how drastic. Here's exponential. And this is also one reason why 100 nanometers. So here, 200 nanometers, but 100 not. They're exponential. This, uh, this ratio start to be exponential increasing. And yeah, this, this is why uh, you have this vision, but I will come also later to it. And when you see here, um, you know this conductive materials, you know the band gap theory theory uh, from, um, from metals. So you have a continuous uh, uh, bands, but at nano, when you imagine a nanoparticle, just think about 10 nanoparticles, uh, there are not so many atoms in the 10 nanometer particles. So at the end, a nanoparticle is the region between bulk and atom properties, yeah? And so things start to be a bit fuzzy, uh, you know, not anymore so clear, not anymore so defined. You don't have a defined continuum band gap anymore. So this is why uh, 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 this gap start now to change. And you have by small changing the atoms, a change in the distance, a small change, but you will see this in the visible light. And actually, this is nice that for a lot of things, it's in the visible light. So you're changing then uh, the optical property um, of the material. But the key important thing that you need to keep in mind is this. So you have nano is between the atomic and molecular level and the bulk level of a material. So one important thing is that you need to keep in mind that chemistry is normally be making reactions and changing the property by materials. But here's actually, if you change the size of a material, just physical designs, if you make it smaller and smaller, also by physical method, you're changing the property of material. And this is really where people feel inspired uh, and empowered. Yeah? And you have, in the nanomaterials, you have uh, some quantum effects. From the atom molecular uh, scale, you have still bulk properties uh, from uh, um, from the bulk materials. We will give example, and you have special nano effects that just uh, occur at this region. Yeah, and this is this is uh, very unique, uh, and it's true for every kind of material. For some materials, you have less or more or less effects, uh, um, but the key thing is that. You can make it for every materials and you have very unique properties. And this is where 20, 30 years ago for different applications, we'll have also this in, in a moment. People feel totally inspired and pushed a lot um, 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 nanoscience. And there was a huge hype about nanoscience and it was everywhere. And um, people feel really that they can now solve key challenges and we will come to this in a moment. But let's first talk about properties. So you have enhanced electrical properties, heat conductivity, increased strength. This is also very important. So for example, if you go to the dentist, uh, you know a lot of um, these composites are nanoparticle based because if they put together, because they have higher surface area. So you have a, a very strong material magnetic properties change and as you said, optical uh, properties uh, changing. And um, to go step by step, one key property that's changing is uh, catalytic properties. So you have better catalytic efficiency uh, through the higher surface to volume ratio. So you have more surface and you know catalysis happened at the surface. So a material is um, more catalytic active or a very nice example is gold. So gold, you know, if you're married, you have a gold ring because why you have a gold ring? It's expensive and it's totally inert. But at the nano scale, uh, uh, gold uh, uh, nanoparticles are catalytic active. Yeah, there's huge catalytic uh, 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 gold catalysis at this level. It's just existing at this level. Yeah, you have so many surface atom they are uh, uh, active, and you make catalysis. And as you know, catalysis is a huge field. It's a very huge field. Electrical, uh, 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 you can increase the conductivity uh, and magnetic of a material. This can be in, uh, interesting uh, uh, for this. Mechanical properties is very important. Yeah, you want to have, uh, uh, as I told you with the teeth, you want to have the, uh, 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 a hard composite, optical uh, uh, properties. 
Sterical increased uh, can be interesting and very important biologically. So you are, you notice viruses. Viruses have nanoparticle size, and we will have uh, uh, this later. Yeah, so uh, nanoparticles uh, 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 have totally different effect inside your body than all other particles, uh, and this can be very useful, but can be also very toxic. So, um, but uh, we will have this important. So these are very uh, so many different properties changing, uh, and we can use this in order to um, to make um, a material with new properties that can help us to address a problem. Uh, first, physical properties, melting point. So uh, uh, what is melting point? Also what you do actually when you melt a material, let's stay with gold. You want the, to, to, to cut them from, from, the, uh, from the solid uh, uh, space. And if you imagine that you have so many uh, atoms like in gold, uh, uh, gold nanoparticles, you have so many atoms at the surface, actually, so the melting points uh, is then you don't any, need any more so much energy to to dissolve this mat material. And this is as this is ex exponential, you see here at uh, 11 nanometer, yes, you have a huge drop from uh, 1000 to then even 500, so half, yeah, it's half. This is, uh, and uh, at uh, the nanoparticle, uh, uh, um, research in the beginning was and also about the definition. So when you can say you have a gold atom or gold bulk property, so so here are properties coming then more to the atomic level, and here's more bulk level. And again, nano is something between. So there was huge research in the beginning done so about this definition. One is uh, uh, gold uh, have bulk properties, and for all materials we have this. Um, then we have the surface area. I told you so. Here you see the ratio of uh, bulk atoms and uh, surface atoms. So, and you see then here, it's drastically increasing, yeah? So the total surface area, the number of surface atoms increased with reducing the size of the particle. And it's expansionally increasing, keep it in mind for 100 nanometer. So uh, this is very important, 100 nanometer, uh, there you have the exponential grow, and then here, short, it's getting more and more. So the fascinating thing is that you have size depending properties. So depending on the size and also morphology, also how it looks like, we will have this in a moment, uh, the properties uh, are changing. So for semiconductors, you have the band cap change. Yeah, You're changing the band cap due to the size and also morphology in the visible uh, spectrum uh, like this. Uh, but also I would like to, to, to tell this that um, the size depending property this um people feel very empowered you know when they discover it but at the end you know it's like a double uh, edge sword so you think that's very good but on the other side is it's also a problem i mean i told you this uh, uh, with the nanoparticles 2.5 nanometers 3 nanometers 3.5 the property is changing this is very nice but it's very challenging you know, because you need to control, synthetically control the size. So if you put uh, some uh, atoms, uh, even somewhere, if you're changing morphology, also with morphology change, you can change the band cup. It's not only fully the size, also uh, 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 the morphology. Um, so properties changing uh, at the so small size, and this is very challenging uh, uh, to control. And you need to control it if you also, if you always speak about application, you need to control uh, um, from batch to batch, uh, the property is very tight. And for nanoparticles, uh, you never have a perfect nanoparticle that is three nanometers. It's, it's, not, it's not going, yeah? You have always a size distribution. So, and if you have size distribution, mean you have also a size, you have a distribution. If you have size depending properties, you meaning uh, you have also a slightly, distribution of properties always with each batch and this is very bad for industrial application and um, what people forgot in the beginning or overlooked because you know when you have this hype people just see the good things that the size depending properties it's an intrinsic challenge for this field yeah? you need to control it and this uh, it's until now a problem that was not so much acknowledged now people start to acknowledge and doing uh, 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 science in this direction, yeah? And this is 
uh, very important, yeah, because yes, this this hype stuff, especially in nanoscience, the hype was extremely strong, and this is also a, a disadvantage. What we will come later to it. Then you have magnetic properties again, size and also morphology, depending you change the magnetic property uh, of the of the material. But we can easily answer now in your hand. We have these uh, in your head. We have this question: Why nano? So at the nano scale, strange things happen to the material. Their properties changing. We have size to uh, pending properties just by changing the size of the material and also the morphology. We have different reactivity. Uh, 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 um, we have um, some color changes, magnetic changes. So this is why nano is so interesting. We have different catal uh, catalytic uh, properties and uh, for the biologically application can now in a moment. So what we need to consider when we have a nanoparticle, what we need to keep in mind, first of all, certainly size. What is the size or size distribution? Because we have many particles and they're ne never perfect. So what is the size distribution of the nanoparticle? First important thing. Second important thing, I mentioned already shape. So they have size, but in the size also hidden the shape. So because here the sizes are, if you have a sphere, this is clear. But if you have other shapes, the properties are also changing with uh, uh, shapes. So very important, we need to have shape control. Another important uh, property that we have last time is porosity. Porosity of nanoparticle. Here you see a very nice porous uh, material. Porosity is very important because you can uh, again, use this porosity. And this is very interesting here. The porosity is actually a bulk property. So if you have, for example, a, a moth, uh, the porosity is, is a bulk property, but you have it also on the nanoscale, which you can use for making nano carrier. So this is very important. A fourth uh, uh, important thing that you need to keep in mind is composition. So you still can make different or you can make a uh, 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 core shell system, or you can make uh, hollow spheres. So you can have different compositions uh, uh, of a nanoparticle, multi -com uh, component uh, uh, nanoparticle, you can make the composites. Yeah, this is also possible at the nano uh, level, uh, and there you can do quite a lot. Then as I told you that so many atoms are uh, at the surface of an, a nanoparticle, um, surface effects is a key. So meaning that you need to, con that actually nanoparticles, the properties most of the time, if they are not porous, are depending by the surface properties. So nanoparticle, for example, gold nanoparticle, gold nanoparticles are non-porous. So the properties of a gold nanoparticle are determined by the external surface. So this is very important. So you can put in mind, so size is important, but then the surface, how the surface looks like is very important for a nanoparticle. Then, yes, the surface, what is the charge of a nanoparticle? Because the surface charge, as we have so much surface, is now a key uh, a property of a material. If you have a bulk property, nobody cares about this, uh, the surface charge, but at the nanoscale, it's very important. And then, uh, very, very important, Aggregation, aggregation. We come later to measurement, but in solution, if you have a colloidal uh, solution, you want to know, or most of the time, you want to have colloidal stable nanoparticles. How we can reach this, we will have also in a, a moment. But aggregation is uh, another key challenge. So after you synthesize a nanoparticle, uh, make it a, a, a mono, have a mono size, uh, uh, then this aggregation is the key challenge in nanoparticle because uh, nanoparticles like to aggregate to, to decrease the surface energy, but we have this also in a moment. So these uh, uh, um, seven properties are very important. So keep it in mind. Nanoparticle, size, shape, porosity, composition, surface, as we have so much surface, then the charge of the surface and aggregation, if you have aggregation. These are key properties of a nanoparticle, and you need always to answer for your nanoparticles all these seven properties, very important. Then also very important is that uh, nano is uh, nothing new. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, humans did this already since long time without knowing it, and 
uh, uh, like this. So one is this nice cup. So you see here during the daylight and light coming from inside. And this red color is from nano-sized gold uh, particles. So people did already uh, uh, nano-science without knowing it. And why they don't know this, we come also in a moment about this. Yeah, so you find these or these nice uh, windows in church. I like ex especially uh, in churches, these windows. Yeah, and here you have nano size materials, different sizes. And with this, you're changing the color. Yeah, so uh, uh, and people discover it. Then just in 2005, look, this is less than 20 years ago. We understand what we have uh, 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 around us. And this understanding, this comes from characterization. Yeah, I told you material characterization is the key and for, for material science. And yes, why we understand this? Because we have different characterization about this. But we're coming in a moment to characterization. First, we come to definition. You can um, just some nano definition. You have people likes to put it in cluster coliates. So you have in the liquid phase, uh, a nanoparticle and nanocrystal. So nanoparticles are one to 100 nanometer um, um, particles. So if you have this uh, as a dry powder and um, why this number, I also answer, but we have it in the next slides. Then uh, uh, colloids are very important. Yes, you want to have colloidal stable um, um, nanoparticle solutions. Then clusters are important. This is especially for catalysis. So they're making especially, so I told you, um, in the first lecture, um, the uh, God makes the crystal and the devil makes the surface. And one uh, way to understand uh, the surface good is to make uh, uh, um, clusters, precise cluster, and then try to understand the, the surface very precisely, because we need to understand it in order to understand better heterogen catalysis. But what I want to stress ex uh, uh, is uh, heavily is that nano definition, you know, can, you could make nanoparticle is a particle between one and 1000 nanometer, but it's not true. It's property based. So because I told you that nanoparticles have special properties and these properties are coming when you go below 100 nanometers. And uh, 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 most of the time we, we said 10 to, to, to 1,000 nanometers because below one, uh, below 10 nanometers, you're, you're starting to go more to the atomic level. So this is why uh, um, we say between 10 and uh, 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 100 nanometers, but at the end, it's a property-based uh, a, a definition. So we like to call something a nanoparticle when you have special size depending properties. So when the melting point, boiling point, band gap, optical, electric, magnetic, catalytic activity change in comparison, drastically change in comparison to the bulk. So, so a nano uh, definition is a property based, not a size depending property. So please keep this in mind because if it would be size depending, you would say between a nanoparticle is between one to 1000 nanometer, but it's not you because you, ta you want to have these nanoparticle effects. So this is a property uh, based uh, definition when you're speaking about na a nanoparticle. Although for me in the head, in the beginning, you would say nanoparticle, are nano size, but no, it's properties. So we want to observe uh, uh, these unique properties and in average it's between uh, 10 to 100 nanometer uh, and uh, uh, higher than 100 nanometers, then you have more bulk properties. So then we not call it anymore nanoparticle and below 10 nanometers, you have more these uh, atomic level properties. So then it's also not a nanoparticle. So this is why these uh, these definitions coming out. So this is very important for you to keep in the hand. And then you can define a, a, a material after dimension. You can have uh, zero, one, two, three dimensional, zero dimension is yes, you have uh, uh, a, a single point. So this is very important for uh, um, uh, quantum dots. Yeah, these quantum dots are very important. So you have TVs now with quantum dots that looks, uh, you have this one dimension, these, these, the, uh, uh, these carbon nanotubes are very important. This is one dimension, a very important nanomaterial. Uh, then you have two dimension, this is then these film thickness and then very important three-dimensional nanoparticles, classical nanoparticles. 
And then uh, uh, you could now ask um, when nanoscience was discovered, as you know, we did it already, humankind was doing nanoparticles, although we didn't know it, but when really this idea of nanoparticles uh, with these special properties came and there, uh, uh, the father and the pioneer was Richard Feynman. And I strongly recommend for you, uh, uh, if you don't know him, read about him and lis listen his YouTube videos. Uh, this guy was uh, a visionary, was really, um, and the way of thinking is very inspiring, very inspiring. Please, please listen the YouTube videos of uh, Richard Feynman. Uh, 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 he was a physicist at Calivana Institute. So it was it's very inspiring to, to uh, listen his videos and also his, his thinking. And his thinking was so simple and so strong, so strong. I also, I want that you see that when you're thinking about basic things, um, how powerful this is. And one example, uh, one example. So he started his talk, okay, he, there was, there's plenty of room at the bottom. You know, and he was thinking, yes, at the bottom, there's, uh, there's really a lot of things to do. And then one easy example, he said, um, how small we can write. So how small we can write. And then he said, yes, well, atoms are the smallest things that we can do, write. And then he, then he defined if we taking the alphabet and uh, let's say each, um, each letter we write either with 10 or 100 atoms, and then he calculate how small, uh, how small, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, if you're writing like this, how small things could be. And it's amazing, yeah? You can write the whole uh, 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 knowledge of humankind at the fingertip, at the size of the fingertip. So powerful is this. And I want, want to, the key for me was here, how powerful thinking is, yeah? Very simple thinking, yeah? Because here, uh, uh, in, here uh, uh, in Europe, uh, this is a bit lost, this kind of thing. You know, we have always now this advanced characterization technique and people do things like this, but they really forget to the big picture and also very asking very simple questions and reflecting on them. And the key challenge is uh, time. You know, we have not uh, uh, time. We are totally busy with uh, different things and we forgetting really to reflect things. Yeah, and uh, I want to also give you this uh, as advice, yeah. Uh, um, once you have time, cannot sleep for whatever reason, just think about certain things, very simple. And it's so powerful and you can come up, you know that uh, 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 countries like, for example, uh, in India and China, they are more and more uh, uh, pushing their also science, they have a lot of hands, they are millions. So I think the key thing for science is now for us that to think more, yeah, to think more about certain basic questions like Richard Feynman, and you came up with very powerful answer. So this is, and, and he uh, and he also proposed uh, their uh, nano robots in, in this his, in this talk. Please listen this complete talk because he's an amazing speaker and very enthusiastic. So uh, uh, very important, yeah. Uh, Richard Feynman, and also a very nice human. So he was, uh, yeah, just a great human and great scientist. Amazing uh, scientist, certainly. He won also the Nobel Prize, although he didn't like prizes at all because he said uh, prizes are for to distinguish people from each other and he doesn't like it. He said, my prize is the, the discovery and then that people use it. So, uh, and this was not political talking. He really meant it like this, a very nice human. So please go to Richard Feynman's in YouTube and listen to YouTube talks, amazing. And he is the father of uh, nanoscience because he really understand that uh, this, level at this nano level there's there are interesting properties there yeah so uh, a visionaire and then nanoscience is very important is the technology nanotechnology yes you think you can it's for physics chemistry biologic medicines you have nano tools nano sensors nano materials nano catalysis very important nano optics nano electronics molecular electronics nano lithography we will have this certain things uh uh, everything biocompatibility is important. So nanotoxicity, a huge field. I will, uh, we will uh, uh, short speak later at the end about this. So this is uh, very important. And 
uh, as I told you, Nano was always there. Mother Nature did it already since millions of years, but just uh, 20, 30 years ago, it really was coming up. And what is the reason for this? What, what, what is the reason why uh, 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 nano science is so popular and uh, uh, was now a huge hype suddenly? And the reason is characterization techniques. Because if you cannot characterize at the nanoscale, we cannot see with the eye a, a, a nanoparticle, but we need uh, tools, we need magnification uh, glasses. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes, you remember our first lecture, uh, uh, we want to play Sherlock Holmes, we want to understand the molecular and nanoscale, but for this we need characterization techniques. Yeah, and if we don't have it, um, um, we cannot um, we cannot access this. So, uh, so the development of electron microscope, of scanning probe uh, 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 microscopy allow us to study the, the nano level. And um, in my, um, uh, also in my point of research, uh, I totally underestimate this, the development of characterization techniques, yes, because this is very challenging and uh, um, groups nowadays, and you need a lot of money. So to make new characterization techniques cost a lot of money, time, and you will not publish long time. And it's again, characterization technique is the hindering step in material science, because we need more and more advanced characterization techniques to access different aspects of a material. And it was here also um, the key that we have um, different characterization techniques that we can actually see uh, uh, how uh, uh, the morphology of a nanoparticle, that we can measure the size of the nanoparticle in dry and liquid state, but we have many development. So uh, material, uh, uh, material discovery is really close connected to characterization. And well, it's a pity that nowadays people forget about this because now we have a couple, couple of characterization techniques and now people, you know, every day I can characterize a, a new, nano formulation or new material change just a bit and then make the standard characterization technique or make a story and publish the paper and this is unfortunately a lot of people do like this and to develop really new uh, tools to uh, access the nano or the molecular level of materials is very very challenging yeah and this is um, a key problem how you can uh, characterize uh, um, nanoparticles um, there's one important concept, and this is the top-down and bottom-up approach. Uh, 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 it is very important to keep in mind. You can, when you say, okay, I want to access now a, a nanoparticle, and I can do this in two ways. One time I take at atoms, put them to cluster, and synthesize uh, um, a nanoparticle. This is basically the chemical approach that we will have later. This is very important. Or I can take a material, you, this cube, and can cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, and then I come at one point in the uh, nanoparticle, uh, which in both ways you can do, and both ways are very powerful. And you can always say that this uh, bottom-up approach is more chemistry, biologically approach. Yes, we're making this structure from the bottom. And then you have engineering and physics, and they uh, like to make, for example, lithography, a very powerful concept. Lithography, very powerful. We have this in the, also in a moment. Physics, structuring uh, uh, materials, films at the nano level, structuring uh, uh, materials at the nano level, big and very powerful co concept. So, and this is uh, 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 then here we coming to this nanotechnology. But for me, as I told you that nanoscience really in a lot of fields didn't proceed to technology. We will have this also in a moment why. And the thing, the problem is we have size depending properties. And when you look for nature, when you look for nature, how nature making uh, the materials and nanoparticles. And as we had COVID, we, we know that nature is able to make really powerful nanoparticles that basically not can kill us, but infect us all. Yeah, it's very powerful and mother nature make materials all from the bottom up. So it takes atoms, put them precisely to molecules, building units and make them nanoparticles or higher structure. So always keep in mind that mother nature is always like chemistry makes everything from bottom up. And, uh, uh, and it's really amazing from a material point of view, what mother nature is doing, this, this materials that mother nature uh, uh, is doing we are not accessing them closely in chemistry. 
And as we had last time, I told you uh, the butterfly for porous materials. I just want to give you an example about the power of uh, uh, nature. Yeah. So when you have a butterfly, you have a uh, light macro uh, 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 structure. So these wings, they're totally light. They're totally light. So they weight nothing. This is very important. Then if you zoom inside, so a characterization, if we zoom now inside, we have a, a, a structure that make the materials uh, uh, micro uh, uh, water resistant. So due to the structuring of a material at the nano level, you can make a material uh, water resistant. This is totally fascinating. And if you go even closer to the nano structuring, you can make photonic crystals. So this color, this very nice blue color, there's no pigment in, in, inside this. No, no, it's about this band gap. It's a photonic crystal. And you see that Mother Nature make uh, uh, nanotechnology and it's amazing. And this material is amazing and we still cannot uh, synthesize it even closer structure. That, uh, uh, we can synthesize already photonic crystal and water resistant, but to have a functional materials that can be uh, reproducible, produced and also used for human normal kind, we are not there yet, but fighting about this. But another area where nanotechnology was very successful that we, and it's very important because if not, we could now speak now in video call is the IT in industry, information uh, storage, uh, 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 making computer, uh, faster so in it nano uh, science nanotechnology was very powerful and very successful very successful yes so there the problem is you have transistor you know and you when you know history you know the first uh, computers that are so huge that like holes and now our smartphone the small ship what we can do it's it's so powerful and also what I really like is that um, when you think is that what you're doing is actually sand. So if you go to the beach, uh, 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 I think in, in, in Kiev, the weather is not so good. Today we have in Bilbao, but it's unusual warm, 29 degrees during the day. So it's time to go on the beach, 200 meters here for my flat. There's the beach and the sand. When you take sand, you know, you need, you need to know that you can make out of the sands your, your smartphone, your, your ship. Yeah, you have sand. You can make the silicium crystal, you can make uh, silicium substrates, and then you can structure this sub, uh, uh, substrate with uh, lithography, uh, uh, or uh, we will have this in a moment. So make nano uh, uh, technology with it. And then you can make, then you have these chips, these high performance chips. It's really amazing what nowadays these smartphones, if you go to history, can do. And there we have, uh, uh, this Morse law, this is very famous, it was uh, very famous. So it, it said Morse law state that uh, the density or capacity of semiconductor doubles every uh, 18 months or quadruples every three years. And this was in the beginning quite true, but it's now slowing down exponential. And the key problem there is again, because we uh, limit, also if we stay with silicium, we at the end we uh, coming to physical limits, and this is uh, this is a problem. And at the end, what researcher nowadays needs to do is to have new materials, and there are existing new materials. But the problem again is the nanoscale; it's so small. You have even quantum effects, and to make reproducible, and we like reproducible, it's very challenging. But if we want to continue, you know, to have more and more at a uh, uh, at small space. Yeah, uh, silicium is not the way to go. We need to have other materials there. There are other materials, but yes, there the problem is reproducibility. And also because we cannot anymore make lithium uh, 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 graphy to make them, there needs to be other chemistry. And this chemistry is so far not very developed. And when we're speaking about uh, a synthesis uh, uh, strategy, yes, you, have, you can make this uh, different states. You have vapor, liquid, solid phase, uh, 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 then hybrid uh, um, techniques. But I advise to um, categorize these techniques totally different, more from the top to down. So always asking yourself, if you synthesize the nanoparticles, I'm starting to take atoms and make the nanoparticle, or I take a big things and go down. Uh, um, this is this this uh, uh, box this categorization I strongly advise and there we have one powerful concept photo or optical lithography this is 
most powerful concept. So uh, Lito means uh, stone and Graffi means writing. So at the end, you write the flight in stone. This is what that means. And it's a very powerful uh, concept. So you're writing uh, a mask with a laser. You can make a, a, a laser mask and you have the, a light source photo resistance, you know, on system radio. And then you can etch that you make chemistry. So you put you put different structure in, uh, in your silicium wafer and this you do very precise. And this is here the key is you can do it very uh, precise and very reproducible. And this is why um, this is so powerful and why our technology working so good. But as I told you, if you want to proceed more and more, becoming we're already coming slowly at the limit uh, with this technique, unfortunately, because it's working so good. But when we coming to a limit, it's always inspire us to go uh, uh, over it. So uh, um, ab about this, yes. Uh, optical lithography, a very strong, uh, most powerful concept for nanotechnology, most precise. It's amazing what you can do with this. Yeah, please read about more about this, but it's not the technique for the future. If you want, if you want to make uh, uh, our computer stronger and stronger, it's not the technique, or just in combination with other techniques in the future. Then another physical concept. This is uh, uh, the Dippen uh, uh, lithography. So this is actually like a, a fountain pen. So this is actually what Richard um, Feynman he said. Why we not write with atoms? And actually. Uh, uh, dip pen uh, uh, comes uh, uh, there like this. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, when the fountain pen, you know, you have also the dip and you're writing with this. And this is then at the atomic level, yes, that you can make these uh, structures. It's very fascinating. And you can use, uh, you can even take gold atoms and make it, you can make it with liquids or even with uh, metal atoms, it's possible. Uh, and you can make nanostructuring uh, about it. So this is, um, um, bottom up, so the before top down, bottom up technique, very nice things you can do. You can write, but what is the problem? You can actually you can make it like writing, but it's not very stable. Yeah, if you write something, you would like to have very stable, but at this atomar uh, low nano scale, um, the structures that you're writing, if you want to call it like this, they are not very stable, and this is the problem. Yeah. So we cannot still uh, avoid every knowledge uh, uh, at the fingertip because we, we cannot make it very reproducible. It's not very stable and it's very expensive. So it's very expensive. So you can to, to, to write so much. Yeah, it's not there. And it's, yeah, these are the problems. So uh, stability, uh, 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 stability, reproducible, and price. This is what hindering us uh, to write this. But there, I hope that we can solve it sooner or later because yes, if we solve it, this would be something. But now I would like this one, one these two uh, examples, they are very important, very powerful, especially the first one. But now let's go to bottom up design approach from chemistry point of view. So we would, we would like to make a, uh, uh, from go there from the chemistry point of view and we would like to synthesize uh, nanoparticles and one important thing is uh, I told you is um, what you need to consider as a chemist if you take now materials is the surface energy due to the increase uh, surface area per unit mass surface in, in, uh, energy increase strongly of the nanomaterials and it's a problem this we need to put in head and we have seven order and seven order is really uh, a, a lot so uh, 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 of magnitude increase if we just increasing, uh, decreasing the size of uh, material. And uh, chemistry or materials um, react on this uh, system. And we need to understand this because we need to react also as a uh, researcher on this. So we have minimization of surface energy because the system doesn't like to uh, a system doesn't like to have an high energy status if you excite an electron in a higher status it will go back so and what um what a material have for possibilities to react on this so how the total uh, surface energy can decrease so we have surface relaxation so inwards shifts yeah to to reduce it we have uh, uh, um 
reconstruction of the uh, of the uh, um, at the surface. So the dangling bonds degree. So we want to have uh, uh, no dangling bonds, and we have uh, 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 adsorption of external species. So I told you diamond. Yeah, diamond is poorly carbon, but at the surface it's different. And this is now you understand also uh, 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 why this phrase coming. Um, God creates the uh, the crystal and uh, uh, the devil the the uh, no God created the bulk and the devil the surface because the surface is very different. But why it's very different? One key aspect is the high surface energy that and the system try to to avoid this and try to minimize it as much as possible. And then we have different species at the surface, totally different chemistry at the surface in comparison to the bulk. And this we need to. Uh, 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 to know we have impurities, uh, we can have uh, 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 this, or what also the system is doing, it's minimizing the surface as much as it can. And if you have isotropic materials, all isotropic materials try to uh, try to make spheres because spheres is you have high volume but uh, uh, low external surf surface, you try to minimize it, or if you have anisotropic uh, crystals. You, are, uh, you have different kinds, you observe shape. So anisotropic means that you have a property where the direction is important. And then uh, if you have a material that have these kinds of properties, you observed, uh, you observe um, different kinds of shapes uh, that are uh, uh, have a lower surface energy. So the system try to react. So you need to understand this. And you see also that with understanding uh, uh, basic uh, uh, basic property of a system, why it's doing this, you understand the system better. And also very important, so if you like to make a, a single crystal, you have this Oswald wiping. And why we have Oswald wiping, Oswald wiping is that you have an increase on, on bigger particles on the expense of little particles. And why a system try to avoid little particles? Because the little particles have a higher uh, energy. So um, um, if you have uh, next time uh, uh, surface uh, uh, wiping, so for example, I like a uh, single crystal go, yes, you, you're increasing the system and decreasing a small time, yes, to in order to give the energy a bit to, to uh, dissolve little crystals that they can then uh, react uh, softly with a bigger crystal and then you increase the bigger crystal. And yes, and the reason is uh, minimizing uh, the overall uh, surface energy. Again, a very easy principle and the consequences are very huge and you're applying it maybe even without knowing it. Another uh, a way, so you can have, you can, you, uh, an, a way for a system is you have different particles, different sizes and the small particles uh, 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 um, go to the bigger particles or combine with each other. So this is one way, another way, and again, I told you already, it's a key challenge is agglomeration. It's it's a key challenge, but you can also use it. So nanoparticles can just agglomerate. You have this Oswald wiping, you have no conversion, or you can have agglomeration of nanoparticles, but agglomeration can be also used. I told you this composites. So the agglomeration of nanoparticles can be positively used to make um, uh, to make strong composites or as a solid materials because uh, they, they the nanoparticles really stick together. It's also a problem if you once have agglomerated nanoparticles, it's nearly impossible to make them again to this state, colloidal stable. It's depending on the system. There are tricks to do this uh, uh, um, we have in the moment. So, um, so there, I told you about challenges already. One challenge is to make monodispersed uh, uh, nanoparticles, so they, they have all the same size. Uh, 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 one thing is also just Oswald wiping that likes to have, have it, but another thing is agglomeration. So you have, if you make in solution and we are in chem chemists, so we are not physicists, we, we are in solution, we make chemistry in solution, you need, you want to have colloidal stable nanoparticles. So and the thing is, you need to have, you need to find ways to stabilize them because they they uh, they like to agglomerate. They have high surface energy, and the high surface energy uh, tends the agglomeration is intrinsic challenge. Again, I told you you need to understand if you make certain science intrinsic challenge, and this is actually quite challenging. 
uh, quite challenging nowadays because in Arctic is everywhere, you know, people uh, wide always advantage of the science. And we talking also in conferences, what I really don't like is we talking only about advantages. For example, I'm I'm making middle organic framework and nanoparticles everywhere at the conference table. They speak very strongly about the advantage of the system and never about the challenges. And especially as a student, when you come to a field, uh, it's very important. And I highly recommend to ask your professors, first of all, what are the challenges? Because advantages you will find in articles, in literature, but what is always hidden is our challenges. Yeah, but, uh, and this and challenge we need to know in order to overcome them. Yeah, and one key challenge is agglomeration. And one way to, to make it electrostatic stabilization. So if you make the surface very negative or very positive, this stabilizes because if it's very positive, then people, then uh, things will not agglomerate. And you can me measure easily uh, the theta potential. Uh, it's an instrument where you can easily measure the uh, um, the um, electrostatic uh, uh, property of a material. So this is important. So electrostatic stabilization, just by pH, for example, you can stabilize nanoparticles that they not agglomerate. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, um, just uh, 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 um, you functionize the external surface with polymers. It's uh, a very uh, established concept in nanoparticle uh, uh, um, um, chemistry and uh, stabilize with this, yeah, you, that they are not anymore agglomerate. So basically protect them with a coating or functionalization uh, about uh, this. Then um, I didn't want to speak in detail, but just to mention it, uh, to synthesis of a nanoparticles, you can make either homogeneous or heterogeneous nucleation, but this is like crystal nucleation, yes, just at the atomic sc scales you, you have. You have the atoms and then you have self-nucleation and you have this crystal, not this crystal goal, but nanoparticle scores. And this can be happening homogeneous or heterogeneous. But as I told you, need it's very, very important to try to make it homogeneous because if you have heterogeneous goal, you have heterogeneous structures in there, then you have heterogeneous properties. So this is uh, 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 yeah, this is a key challenge. So synthesis of nanoparticles for different classes is still a key challenge. Then speaking about different classes, so again, now comes the boxes. We have organic, inorganic, and what is not here, but you know this already, we have also hybrid, the middle organic framework. So you have classical organic uh, 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 nanoparticles, polymer nanoparticles, Liposome, very important. You know that uh, uh, now your vaccines are this, this are nanoparticles uh, where RNA is inside uh, the liposome, so dendrimers, and then you have these inorganic nanoparticles. Quantum tots are very important. The gold nanoparticles, iron oxide here, you can play with the magnetic uh, properties. For example, they are used in uh, um, for um, for um, cancer tumors in the brain, because you can make them very small and you can with the magnetic field guide them there and then switch the magnetic field many times and heat them and burn the tumor out. Carbon nanotubes, important porous silica is very important. And now we're coming to application is, uh, first of all, we, uh, we have also nat naturally uh, occurring nanoparticles that we can use and mankind nanoparticles. And then we have different kind of uh, application, catalysis is very important field, very important uh, field, energy, solar cell structuring, we had this uh, with the lithography, quantum dots, yeah, when you have in your, uh, uh, in uh, um, a TV uh, that's made by quantum dots, very important, MIT imaging, this iron uh, oxide, then healthcare, uh, nanoparticles, nanocarriers, we come this in the moment uh, to this, then a sun queen, yeah, now when the summer is coming, you have this titanium oxide nanoparticles, so they have different nanoparticles everywhere. But I think this is fair to say, and I think nanoscience, nanotechnology was the field where you had the biggest hype that you can imagine. Yeah, people were crazy 20, 30 years ago because they was thinking that uh, we can solve every problems we can make in nano abundance quantum computer we have can make uh, clean air clean water clean energy everything and the problem with hypes and the hype was very very strong is 
that again, that you see only the, the power, the advantage of the field, but you're neglecting the disadvantage, size dependent properties, agglomeration uh, uh, challenges, intrinsic properties of the system. And there was not so good address because researchers, they are, um, yeah, they like to make amazing papers and, uh, uh, and they did. Also there was really uh, fundamental science was happening uh, amazingly, but the problem is that this fundamental science uh, was never transferred so much in technology. So when you see what was invested there and what people promised, researchers promised there, uh, that uh, humankind, also now our funding agency, they are quite skeptical about nanoscience because uh, we could never so address the challenges. And yes, we are in this hype cycle and I think we're going here in this desolation phase. So we had this here, we did not, but going there down, I have to say, Due to COVID, I think it's now going a bit up because uh, we make the nanoparticle and um, uh, uh, so this we have to do. So we have, need to take this knowledge that we have gathered over the last 20, 30 years and there's a lot out and needs to separate it between useful and not useful. And then we need to, to take the power because these materials have unique properties and we can make technology out of this. Mother Nature proved us, uh, us but we have to do it and we need to address, uh, we need at first to acknowledge and then address the challenges. And one uh, example, because I'm doing research about this is this porous nano carrier uh, uh, about this. So you make Trojanic horses and the idea is that you take a, 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 a cytostatic drug, uh, you know, a cancer uh, agent. So because unfortunately, you know, we're getting, no, not unfortunately, we're getting older and older, but each year, uh, we increasing in the property uh, and suffer and sand cancer and cancer will be soon the main cause of death. And you know that uh, currently there are cytostatic drugs, so cell poisoning drugs, where you're treating this, can this cancer, but they are not very selective. So you inject them in the body and as we consisting of on cells, they're affecting everything and you have these huge side effects and the ideas. We take the drug, put it in porous nano car carrier, uh, um, close it, then making even targeting uh, uh, ligands around this. And then the idea is we inject them in the tumor, uh, in, the, in the human body, in the bloodstream, then they're circulating. And due to the um, targeting uh, ligands, you know, they find the cancer cells, they're uptaken in the cancer cells, and then they are, uh, release the drug. So you need a mechanism to release the drug. This is so-called uh, uh, um, endosome of the, and you need to, to have endosome and escape. And then you have the drug going out and killing the cancer cells. And this powerful concept, it's very powerful. It's not anymore mentioned even in the, um, in the world report, in the world cancer report uh, uh, anymore. So you have nano mentioned one, two times, but clinical people that really applied at fighting against cancer, they don't see uh, cancer uh, nano carrier as a way to go currently, although there's 20, 30 year, years. Luckily now with COVID, their nanotechnology could do something, but for cancer therapy, uh, it's not there yet. Although there's many research, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands nano uh, formulation, but they're not applied. And what are, why? Why, why, what is the problem? And the problem was this hype. And the problem is also researcher that try to, would like to be famous, they would like to have publishing article and they synthesize these multi-functional nanoparticles in very uh, difficult ways. So we have a difficult, you have a very challenging problem and they answer it with a very challenging answer. And But the way to go is like Leonardo da Vinci said with simplicity. The way, what we want to do, the actual challenge is to synthesize a multifunctional nanoparticle in the most simple straightforward way that possible because simplicity means that it's very reproducible and also cheap and this we want to go and nowadays uh, 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 um, the nano carriers they are out there they are done in very difficult way that are not reproducible and then also quite expensive although I have to say for non for cancer nanotherapy the price you can always forget the key here is more the reproducibility and uh, now the, uh, a way how to change the mindset of people. This are very difficult, as you know, but a way to go is uh, to define uh, 
Uh, I told you number is a very powerful concept and I just want briefly the multi-efficiency concept uh, 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 that I proposed is the extension of the atom economy concept and what just to give you an example where you just poorly think you don't do experiments in the in the uh, uh, um, in the lab so if you have no time uh, you maybe you have no cannot make no experience but you have time to think then use this time and you just by simply thinking about some things you can uh, come up with something and um, here this concept was done because it was bothering me really when you see this literature this thousands of literature of nanoparticle formulation and you cannot compare them, you cannot evaluate them so I come up with this concept so I defined that building units so imagine you have a nanoparticle with four building block units uh, and then you define functional units that are units that have function for example in this case we have two functional units and then we have one process step means a reaction step so we need just one reaction for having this nanoparticle and now the question is how we evaluate this nanoparticle and what I did is I defined the functional ratio. These are the number of functional units divided by the number of building block units. This is 0 0.5. So basically this number reflects how functional your nanoparticle is. And now, very important, I defined the process efficiency. So these are the number of functional units divided by the number of process steps. So this number tells you how efficient you incorporate functionality into your nanoparticle. And both together is the multifunctional efficiency uh, 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 number. And this number tells you how good you are. So, and you can calculate this for any nanoparticle formulation. And the idea is if you, if the number is low, don't, don't try to apply this for nano carrier applications. So don't kill cancer cells and don't try to kill mice with this because if this number is low, you will never reach um, 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 clinical impact. Yeah. So the idea is to, 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 with this number, to push people for the simplicity idea. So going, try to find ways to, to make something very functional in a very efficient way. Efficiency, as you know, I like efficiency, but this is really, really important. And I hope really that this helps to change the mindset and then co come up with ideas. So uh, so this uh, way, uh, try to change the mindset of people. And also, what again, I want to inspire you that you just, uh, the thinking can already come up and can improve science. So this uh, for today, my take home message is that you really, in general, for all things that you really, um, if you do something, try to think, try to ask yourself basic question, why I'm doing for what is useful, really this very simple questions for nanoscience, what is nano, what, what are the definition, what are properties, and to answer them very clearly, this is very powerful, because if the base, this is basically the foundation of everything, this, this, and if this foundation are, is not good, you, you need not to push the same for, for nanoparticles. If you have a multifunctional nanoparticle, it's uh, synthesized in a um, very difficult way. You 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 can here have even afterwards amazing, the most amazing results. Okay, maybe you have then a very big paper and a high journal, but you will never, it will be never be applied. It will never be applied. So think about this. And then the another uh, uh, thing is to connect. Yeah, like Sherlock Holmes, you know, I like to think and connect things. So, so uh, 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 see things that have everybody seen before, but connect things in different way and then you will have um then you will have uh, knowledge when that we want to as a researcher so uh, and also my example is take time you know think about uh listen this uh, video of uh, richard Feynman and also don't forget albert einstein albert einstein was sitting in a patent office in switzerland and he was bored so i know nowadays Ask your professors, they're never bored. We are always busy, but this is this the system that nowadays existing is against creative research. So you need to have time, take time. Like Albert Einstein, he was sitting and was thinking about the world. And then and then he came up with things that are so powerful. I mean, sure, we are not so clever like Albert Einstein, but if we if you reflect certain things more deeply, uh, then you then you can, can you would be surprised how you come up to so big industry like BSF. They take different researcher, put them for one week in one box without any computer, and then let them discuss them things up. It's very important that uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
this skill to to really reflect and coming up with creative uh, ideas um, this is missing and we need to buy this so and maybe we have now uh, 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 i really encourage you to to uh, to make this uh, because it's really uh, yes very powerful and uh, at the end i would certainly thank you but i would like to thank also my group you know i uh, um, i'm doing science and not anymore me unfortunately standing in the lab although i would like to do this but it's my group have the uh, uh, the pleasure and we have a lot of fun because uh, um uh, although I have very challenging subjects, so I try, I like to think about things and come up with strange idea and challenging subject, but my people are inspired by this and they're doing. I'm also happy to have, look here, Orisa. It's, I have also an Ukrainian PhD student, very strong, I would say, very hard and very creative worker. Yes, and I would like to uh, thank you and my group. And at the end, I would like to uh, advertise the school. It's now, we have nearly, we have now the webpage is going, um, I think by, End of this week, it's maybe finished. So this school will be, will come in. We have very prestige speaker, internationally European speaker. We have uh, two Nobel uh, uh, Prize winner and very powerful speaker that will we can really inspire you. And this uh, also very important school is for everybody. So uh, uh, professors, uh, uh, researchers come, they will have a certificate, but also students can have a participant certificate. So I really highly recommend to visit this and with this i'm at the end and i would like to thank you for this lectures because i told you normally i don't teach anymore and it's really a pleasure to teach unfortunately online but maybe sooner or later we can make this in person yeah thank you thank you very much stefan and are there any questions i don't see any in the chat um, then perhaps before someone else comes with Question. Then I sh shall ask several one several questions. Uh, so uh, I didn't see uh, too much opportunities in this field in the field of nanoscience for uh, people like, for example, myself. Or uh, there are many students who are working in this field. Uh, the people in uh, classical organic synthesis was making small molecules. What do you think about that? What are opportunities for? Organic synthesis chemists in in nano in the area of nanoscience. Are there any possibilities to do something useful there? Oh, this is this is a, 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 a this is this is a very good uh, a question about organic chemistry. You can always thinking about the functionalization of nanoparticles to make it in very also to any kind of nanoparticles or so polymers or short short molecules you need to functionalize to stabilize uh, uh, this you can think about this or you can create uh, you can you can even make a nanoparticle don't forget about this for example what i like uh, also this you know, um, as I do this reticular chemistry, reticular chemistry is this design approach, but you can also think that you're taking small building blocks, molecular building blocks, uh, and try to connect them. So, for example, there exist these uh, molecular cages. Uh, this is basically one pore, and then you need can take organic chemistry and connect precisely these uh, organic uh, 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 cages. So I would more go, as when, when you think about construction, I would more go for um, molecular cages and connect them precisely, that you can really, uh, what I like, molecular cage is one pore, one, exactly one pore. And imagine you can connect this one pore with another pore precisely, and you can buy the nanoparticle very precisely. Okay, this is maybe not for application, but this I find, um, because you know, uh, uh, Alexander, I, I try now to make hierarchical chemistry. So I take nanoparticles and connect them. So this is, is another thing what I can advise you is take nanoparticles. Uh, uh, so uh, hierarchical structure, hierarchical materials are so important and there exists not a chemistry to make it. So my research currently is to connect nanoparticles, but not by self-assembly, but like this reticular chemistry to, to connect them with strong bonds. And there I need molecular spacer. And molecular spacer design is it's not there. So there is, I hope, uh, 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 I'm just developing this and there I hope that I can work with you later, I guess, because also in this molecular spacers, you can connect nanoparticles, but in the molecular spacer, you can also uh, incorporate properties inside. Yeah, and, and again, you make this hierarchical structure, you can make this periodic or aperiodic. And I think there's the future to take nanoparticles as a building blocks. There's, um, who, 
um, who was the name of the guy in um, in Northwestern University? Uh, uh, Shed, uh, Shed, Shed Mirkin. So Shed Mirkin take a, 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 a RNA and connect nanoparticles very precisely. Amazing, but they are not stable. These super lattice assembly, they are not stable. But I, I think we need to go for stability. So I, my dream is to make this reticular design approach uh, at the nanoparticle. This is actually the chemistry that I want to develop. And there's a uh, 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 huge, huge potential. Yes, also if you're, you, because MOFs, MOFs are a uh, uh, middle organic framework. So have organic chemistry on, on the, uh, uh, you have linkers at the external surface. So you can take linkers making your organic reaction. So at the end, you can take organic chemistry and bring it then to material uh, chemistry. So I think this is for me, the this topic that will come in the uh, uh, in the future personally thank you are there any other questions uh, can i ask you also uh, actually uh, alexander uh, have a question like mine uh, and uh, i also would like uh, to ask you about uh, uh, organic molecules. Uh, we we saw about uh, you, you told about uh, dendrimers, uh, liposomes, and uh, some others, but uh, mainly uh, the nano properties uh, are uh, exist uh, or appear uh, in the solid state. And what about the, uh, for example, organic molecules? Uh, would they appear the nano? Uh, uh, properties uh, can be solid state uh, of these molecules or some other uh, states. For example, uh, can we expect that, for example, uh, organic uh, dyes will uh, have other optical properties when they will become uh, uh, nanoparticles? Or, or not, maybe some some uh, things like this. Thank you. Maybe very important question. Oh, I should address this uh, more. So we have different properties. So, and uh, what you told now, it's correct that inorganic particles have these quantum properties. So gold nanoparticles have, if you structure them, these uh, changing in quantum properties that organic uh, uh, materials not have. Uh, organic nanoparticles, but for organic nanoparticles, uh, you you want to have another properties, and what you want to have, uh, 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 for example, from a liposome, what properties a liposome has? It has the property uh, uh, um, uh, that actually every nanoparticle, but it has the properties of the atomic level because you have uh, a nanoparticle is like a, a molecule. It's in solution because the uh, gravitation force is less than the molecular motion. So molecular motion is still stronger than the gravitation force. So it's it's not sediment uh, down. But uh, the nanoparticle have also the bulk property. So for example, for for morphs, also, you have porosity inside. And actually, for for these organic nanoparticles, you you basically have not these quantum effects, but you want what you want to have. You want to have this combination of uh, uh, atomic level properties and uh, the, the bulk properties. So this is actually the angle for organic uh, nanoparticles. Very important uh, question. And there, uh, at the end, uh, uh, um, uh, this is one thing. And the other thing is, again, you have this high surface um, uh, uh, ratio. So you have these uh, uh, external surface uh, properties. but. Um, your question also to answer with the dice. The dice is then if you have the porosity, uh, there you have not quantum effects. There you have then host guest interaction uh, uh, changing. Yeah, but it's very question. So very important question. So please also for nanoparticles, there are different properties. And for the inorganic one, you have these quantum properties. And for the organic one, you you targeting more these properties that you have a combination uh, uh, from bulk and uh, 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 atom uh, um, properties. Very good question. Very good question. Mm, okay, thank you. Yes. And uh, one more question from me. Uh, uh, what is, uh, are there any uh, industrial applications of nanoparticles which are, which are, uh, which can be uh, highlighting examples like you did with MOFs? Is there, is there any uh, uh, considerable market, for example, for industrial applications? But do you have any such information on this? 
So, uh, so the market is very different. Also, what you tell, I mean, for for, look, for example, for silica, it's just structuring. It's not this nanoparticles. Then for, t as I told you, for for uh, 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 inorganic nanoparticles, uh, like uh, gold, you have gold catalysis that you can use either for application, but also for understanding. Titan oxide nanoparticles, for, um, then uh, 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 for uh, uh, in cosmetic and uh, sun creams, um, 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 yes, uh, then you have this nano carrier drug delivery. This is porous nano. This is now a huge topic. And uh, uh, then things like this. Yes, you can. Um, I would not. Uh, uh, um, yeah, so catalysis. I, for, for scientists, catalysis or uh, um, uh, biomedical. But for biomedical, I have to, to say there is something coming up. Uh, uh, a friend of mine writing a review that, for example, with nanoparticle researchers just think about cancer. And actually, there are so many other things. Uh, and he's really uh, applied scientist, best applied scientist that I go, Twan Lammers in, uh, in Aachen, nanomedicine doctor, so they work. So actually, nano can be applied much more uh, um, in, in, in different illness. And then, for example, iron oxide, uh, for, you have this also contrast agent, just things like this, yes. But um, yeah, so at the end, you can do there a, a lot, but for application means by where I see at most, or um, so in which direction is hard to answer, uh, 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 Alexander? Can you specific side which direction you want like to uh, answer? It's hard to say. I, I was about it was uh, something about general question. Uh, so for the morphs for the porous materials, you provided some some numbers. Uh, I, I mm -hmm. was wondering if there is there is something like that for nanoscience. No. Yeah, for nano. But the num the problem here the number can be endless. To because if you if you define nanoparticles, it's but if you make nano uh, structuring like like what we have, then it's basically everything. So it's yeah. it's very hard. So uh, 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 and these numbers and as I said, these numbers I don't these numbers I would see very critically because people, you know. What I don't like, researchers start to be like salesmen. We try to sales, sell our our science, and it's over. And what a salesman do? He's overloading things drastically. Mm. So, and uh, especially for nanoscience researcher, accumulate so much money. Unfortunately, they were so successful in the beginning. This is actually now the problem because now people are tired as a funding agency. Governments are tired of nanoscience, although nanoscience is so powerful. Because in the beginning, researcher wins too much money and deliver too less. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, so, um, for, uh, so, so at, at the end, uh, uh, from fundamental perspective, you can do a lot. As I said, the simplicity of a MOF that you make nanoparticles that are functional. So, also where you where you want to to look uh, about this, you can thinking about processing how to make nanoparticles from chemistry point of view. Um, yeah, there's so much to do actually. So the question is from what angle you look. I'm more fundamental scientist, so I like to make something that is really distinct, different than before, rather than to uh, apply it in the first step. So I, I thinking more what can be done that is really challenge the status quo, uh, but in, uh, 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 but I don't ask what, to challenge in the right way the status quo in application because actually it's also very difficult. Thank you. And uh, one more question I have. Uh, so, uh, these uh, nanoparticles allow us to have very large surface area. And on the other hand, we have porous materials that have, can have very large surface area, for example, those moths. Uh, and can we uh, make nanoparticles from porous material, for example, from moths? Is there something done in that area? In the, in the yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, what what to say? I can say that one of the leading pros in this area. Yes, this is for me. Uh, 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 and here the argument is also due to crystallization. Is uh, you can make it very precise. You know the crystallinity of MOFs give you the access. If you once uh, understand the diffusions, you can crystallize. Uh, also monosperse colloidal stable MOF nanoparticles, but it's very challenging because every MOF has their own chemistry. Uh, uh, so things, yes, but this is done and we have this, yes, this can be done. And uh, this I recommend because for me, as, as you can precisely make a MOF, if you can as you can design 
the framework, you can design the nanoparticle. And again, this is why I want to take this MOF nanoparticle as a building block to make higher hierarchical structure. I see. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems that we don't have. Uh, I think Olga has one question more. Yeah. Uh, so due to uh, Alexander, I have uh, one more question about, uh, for example, uh, porous materials such as uh, silica. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, we we know very well about uh, uh, modified uh, surface over the silica uh, for high performance liquid chromatography. And mm. uh, can we uh, consider this uh, uh, nanoparticles with the uh, surface uh, with the coverage of uh, organic uh, molecules uh, residues as nanoparticles and uh, expect from these uh, 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 residues uh, the properties uh, on nano level, for example. Uh, uh, yes, you mean for uh, for chromatography, lithium t t for liquid uh, tomography, a bit to use it then. Yes, but there you will have a ch key challenge. Uh, it's the so I would I always would always go for porous partic porous particles because if you just take nanoparticles, imagine non porous particles. So you you have external surface high energy, so they want agglomerate with agglomeration directly. The the your surface area is done, and the problem is if you make uh, chromatography, you have you have materials and they will stick at the external surface, and with this you will have change in the properties. And uh, 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 again, directly can agglomerate. Also, I I would say poor nano, also non porous nanoparticles are not not a way to, to go for it because you have always this problem problem. Agglomeration and non-agglomeration, and and with the uh, 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 if you have species at the external surface, the properties change, and you need to adsorb and desorb them. So it's uh, as I would always go for porous nanoparticles because then you put them together, they are they are very solid, and then you just use the inner porosity. So I would never use the external uh, uh, porosity for for this kinds of application. Mm -hmm. This is also a problem with catalysis because you're changing the the surf, external surface and uh, uh, um, yeah for example you're starting gold particle uh, nanoparticles to to cover with even in moths you know you put them you put iron oxide in moth and then it's covered because yeah so it's again catalysis the same you have advantage but at the same have disadvantage uh, challenges very huge challenges yeah okay thank you. Thank you very much. So, are there any other questions? Instead, I don't see any questions. So, I would like to thank you, Stefan, again for this uh, series of lectures and for your uh, support of Ukrainian chemists and Ukrainians in general. This is very important to us, and uh, and we really appreciate this support from your side. Yeah. Thank you. We are welcome. Uh, by the way, there is something in in, yeah. in the chat a comment, but I cannot. Sorry, I cannot oh, yeah, yeah. speak yeah, Ukraine. Ukraine. It was not. It was not a question. It was a, a comment to your response about. Uh, ah, okay. Then I will think. Sorry. Yes. This is, was about uh, that our one of our students was synthesizing uh, nanopines of silver as electrode from. Ah, uh, interesting. Preparative debromination of aryl bromide. So this is, can be used. Is examples one of the examples yeah, yeah. patients yeah yeah and if there are more questions just write me and as I said and and please let's go to the school but I think Alexander you will advertise the school it's going pretty good now we have nearly all speakers ready yeah and we have uh, about two hundreds uh, more than two hundreds participants registered at the moment so it's it's good the participant registration is going well too so. I'm super happy. I'm super happy to hear this. That yeah, yeah. that's going. Then I wish you all a, a, a good day. Yes, and I hope we see soon, yeah. speak soon, or see you in person soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. You're, you're for our students. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you so Kein Freude, mit großer Freude, wirklich mit großer Freude. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Thank you. Good luck uh, for your, for your uh, <clears throat> uh, scientific research.
and your new results. <laughs> we wish you to give to, to get the new results. Yeah, it's going in nanochemistry. Thank you, thank you, and wish the same. And as I said, Alexandra sent me already link us after uh, some ideas. So I hope also over the time we can slowly establish a bit uh, um, science together. And uh, Alexandra is already, I wrote last year a cost project, a networking there I could, there okay and people can include. And I hope really that uh, over time that EU is more and more open that we can even writing grants together, you know, this would be something very useful. Uh, uh, and once there's the possibilities, we will speak again all together because I think this would be uh, 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 something very useful and very important. Yeah. Thank you. Step by step. Okay. Right. That's, that's, that's. And uh, uh, yes, and I, I will see after Easter uh, if if there's no, uh, if there's not with the translation, I, uh, I will phone there and try to take effort. I will write this down in my calendar and and by, I will ask you in two weeks if it's if you have some news and if not, uh, uh, I will take actions. Okay, that because I'm also excited that you can do this and uh, it just needs. Uh, I think Mark Mark is a good, but he just. You know the the just uh, I think three days uh, the little boy is and uh, you know people are if you ask I have my experience if if you ask them unusual requests and I'm asking quite often unusual requests you know people are tend you know industry when if you ask them something you know what is out of the norm it's always a bit challenging for them but uh, you just need to be uh, uh, persistent very persistent and then you then you then you will get it so i'm very sure with wiley we can clarify this okay so see you bye see you good luck thank you for you <laughs> much more good luck really. thank you bye. thank you thank you bye.